Hi, it's Alaska Granny. What should you be doing now to prepare? SHTF isn't uh, just some far away thing anymore. It's here. And the predictions are this is going to be worse in the fall and go clear through next year. If you weren't getting a wake up call that things can go bad in a hurry and it can go bad everywhere for everyone, then you need to think back over what you've been through the last two or three months. What were the things that you wish you'd had more of? What were the things you wanted that you couldn't find? What are the things that keep you awake at night that you're afraid might be coming next? Those are the things you need to be preparing for. Not out of fear, it's so that you have the insurance to know you can take care of yourself. If you don't prepare, you should be scared because I don't know what you're going to do. Rely on your government, rely on a handout, rely on your neighbors. Why wouldn't you want to rely on yourself? We want to continue to plan for a situation like we've had. So you want to take stock here and today. What do I have? What do I need? What can I do to meet those needs? Well, it's harder to get the free buckets at the grocery store anymore, especially if you aren't going to the store. But I was able to order some online from Home Depot and go and pick it up in the parking lot. They actually had the buckets and the lids. They're not food grade buckets, but if you properly uh, package your foods, these are still gonna work great. The lids include the little rubber gasket, which is what seals the air out so that your food will last. It's airtight and waterproof. If you live in an area with rodents and squirrels, things like that, know that they can chew through buckets. I had squirrels chew through the heavy duty white buckets out of my granny camp. That's when foods stored in cans are gonna be a better option. Foods have been unavailable, but they're coming back into the stores. This is the time when you need to be stockpiling with everything that you can. If you can find beans and rice in the store, get them, get a variety. Pick up small packages so you have a variety. They're only a dollar or two a package, and it can be the difference whether you eat or don't eat in the future. That's one of the things that I found during this last experience that I didn't have as much a variety of some of my foods as I wished I had. I wanted to have more of a variety so everything didn't taste the same day after day, even if I mixed it up a little differently. It all tended to flow together. So get a variety. You don't have to get just 20 pounds of one bean. You can get 20 pounds by getting two pounds each of 10 beans. Make sure you also have rice. It's great to extend any of these things that you have. I also got another package of oatmeal because that's great for breakfast. I was able to find pasta again. Even if you can't find the type of pasta you want or the shape that you want, get what you can get because a few months ago there was none on the shelf. Pay attention to the shape of your pasta because long things like spaghetti and linguine, fettuccine, take up much less space than if you get some of the interesting shapes of pastas. It's nice to have the other shapes, but if you don't have room for a lot of food, stick with the smaller compact packages so you can have more food in this smaller amount of space. Look for things like dehydrated potatoes. You only need to add water. Dehydrated muffin mixes, noodle packages, any of that stuff that you just basically add water and you're good to go. Even get some packaged foods like macaroni and cheese. They aren't gonna have as long of a shelf life as the rice, beans, oatmeal, and pasta, which lasts nearly forever, but these things are great to have on hand. They last for many years, and they're going to be a simple food that you can make in an emergency. Something that you can put on the table when you're hungry. Something you can make quickly, even if there's no power and you have to use your camping stove or something. These are simple foods that you can prepare. Make sure you have a stockpile of water. That's the most important prep that we need to actually survive. And no matter what the emergency, everybody still needs water to drink, water to cook, water to wash. Store all the water you have room for and then make sure you have a way to filter it if something should happen and you don't have access to clean water anymore. I pick these foods up because they're all gonna go into my bucket. It's not the premium way to package them, to just stick them in there, but for now, 
I have extra food and I am happy with that. If you can still get Mylar bags, that's great. Seal them in Mylar bags. If you don't have Mylar bags, add an extra Ziploc bag around them. Maybe seal them up in a food saver. But putting extra food away now is absolutely so important. We just had hardships. We don't know what the crop situation is going to be. We do know, you can hear, that there are droughts, there are floods, they are plowing under foods that were ready to go, but there was no way to take them to the store. You can look on all the emergency food sites and they don't have any food in stock. We hear on the news that they're slaughtering the animals, but the meat's not going to the market. It's all getting wasted. Take this as a wake up call to get all the food that you can that you're gonna need for your family. Get enough for a week, get enough for two weeks, then a month and two months. Get as much as you can. And all of these things only cost a few dollars, but there's going to be many servings of food that will keep my family going. Then if you don't have a nice supply of over-the-counter medicines, pick them up now while they're available. Coming into the next winter, it's going to be cold and flu season anyway, and if we have another uh, resurgence of the coronavirus or this COVID-19, you want to be able to take care of the symptoms the best you can at home. Get some vitamin pills, try to get as healthy as you can because your ability to resist disease is going to be the long-lasting success to any emergency plan that you have. Then if you need cleaning supplies and you can find them, get them. If you need toilet paper and paper towels and you can find them, get them. I've rarely gone to the store the last few months. I'm thankful that I have the things that I need to keep my family going, but the few times I have been out, they just haven't had the basic supplies, beans, rice, oatmeal, pasta, toilet paper, cleaners. They just haven't had those things. The shelves have been bare. I'm starting to see a few of those things now, so I took it as an opportunity to bulk up my food storage and replace the foods that I've been eating during this shutdown in our society. Being a prepper allows us to take care of ourselves so that we're prepared for the unknown and we're not scared of the unknown. It gives you peace of mind that you can do the best with what you have no matter what comes. Who wouldn't want to have that peace of mind? And that's why we should all become preppers. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.